Hello everyone, today we're looking at the work of Jan van Eyck. Uh, he was a Flemish painter and particularly we're going to look at one of his pieces, mostly one of his pieces, the Ghent altar piece, which is just a uh, treasure in, uh, of Western art. So this is a portrait he did of himself. It was probably meant to be sort of like his business card. He would hang it in his, in his studio to kind of show potential patrons what he could do, how incredibly lifelike he could paint. Um, there's two inscriptions on there. So at the top it says, as I can, and it's a play of word because the, the Dutch word for I actually sounds a lot of his like his last name. So it's sort of like what Van I can do. And then down there you have in Latin, um, Jan van Eyck made me, and then it gives you a date very conveniently, uh, October 21st, 1433. Probably the day he finished this, it would have taken a lot longer than one day to paint this. So the part of Flanders he worked in is now part of present day Belgium. So on the map there you can see Bruges where he lived and worked. So there's three words to know, a diptych, a triptych, and a polyptych. So diptych, the Greek root words, is di, which is two, and tick is like a panel or a plate. So a diptych is sort of like two panels that can open and close, they're hinged. A triptych uh, has three panels, one in the middle and then uh, one on each side that can fold in usually on the central one. And a polyptych, which is what the Ghent altar piece is, has many panels. So poly is just the root word for many. So here you have an example of a Van Eyck diptych. Now, most of his work was created for people to have privately in their home. Uh, there were kind of often objects of personal prayer or meditation. So this uh, is a scene of the Annunciation in the Bible where uh, most of the art in those days was made for churches or for worship settings. So um, this is seen in the Bible where the Archangel Gabriel comes and tells Mary that she's going to have a baby. And this style of painting, because it's all done in gray tone, is called grisaille. And man, look at that. Isn't that just amazing when you look at the angel and how the wing really literally looks like it's popping out of the frame there? Um, just amazing craftsmanship. So th that is called trompe l'oeil to fool the eye because this painting totally fools the eye into thinking you're looking at a piece of sculpture instead of a painting. So just quickly, this is uh, a, an example of a Van Eyck triptych. So you can see the three panels there. And this is the open view with the panels open. And then here you have the closed view and you can see it's another uh, enunciation scene with the same kind of trompe l'oeil fool the eye into thinking you're looking at sculpture style. So this is the Ghent altarpiece and this is the closed view and that is what people would see on most days when they would go into the church the altarpiece would be closed and then on holidays and uh, like important feast days the panels would be opened and you could see the glorious inside of the piece. So this is the open view of the Ghent altar piece. And originally this would have had a big ornate frame around it. And actually Jan uh, von Eyck's brother Hubert did a lot of the planning and construction and kind of laying it out. But then Jan von Eyck did like all the painting, pretty much all the painting on it. Um, but that frame that housed these painting panels uh, was destroyed after the Reformation. Uh, sadly, a lot of the amazing art that was in Catholic churches was destroyed during that time and this frame was one of them. So this is St. Bavos Cathedral in Ghent, also in uh, Belgium, and that is where the altarpiece is still housed to this day. And uh, that was also where the panels were hidden down in the basement um, after the Reformation. Um, and that is why those panels survived and we have that incredible artworks today. So here you have uh, the, we're back to the closed view and we're going to look at the top two rows of panels, mainly that those, those two that are on the bottom right now. There's two below that that we'll look at later. Um, but you can see it's, it's one big room that can continues over all four panels. You have the Archangel Gabriel on the left and he looks like, you know, if you look how closely he's up to the ceiling, he's actually like too big for the room as is Mary. Uh, just kind of shows kind of their presence being kind of larger than life. 
this is a detail of the Archangel Gabriel there. And oh my goodness, just look at that. Look at that incredible um, detail in like each gossamer, silky hair, you know, single like hair brush stroke. Um, the shine on each individual pearl and then those beautiful almost like soft watermelon colors on the wings and then you have uh, he's he's holding the white lily which is a symbol of Mary's purity and um, the lettering just is his greeting you know hail Mary full of grace and here you have Mary and the Holy Spirit is like a dove is coming down on her and I think uh, what to me is the most beautiful part of that painting is her hands. They just look so beautiful and soft and gentle. And then the detail I really love is her answer back, which is I am the Lord's handmaiden, um, is actually printed on the on the painting upside down because it's meant to read, be read from above. God is supposed to read that, not the person looking at the painting. I just think that's such a cool detail. All right, so this is the bottom row of the outer view. And in the middle, we have two more of these amazing Grisaille trompe l'oeil paintings. And those are of John the Baptist on the left and John the Evangelist on the right. Those were, were like the patron saints of the chapel where the altarpiece originally was placed. And then on the left and the right, those are the donors. They're the people who actually paid for the um, the art. So. You know, today, if you donate money, they might put your name on a plaque on the wall. If you paid for a really important painting during the Renaissance, you might get your photo put in it. So there you go. <laughs> Here is a detail of the face of John the Baptist. You can see the incredible detail and, and the lights and darks and how that really looks like it's made from marble. So we're moving on to the open view and the panels at, at the top in the middle there, you have the Virgin Mary on the left and then Christ the King uh, on the throne in the middle and John the Baptist on the right. And we're going to have a look at that part right there. So here is a close up. You can see the jewels, just the incredible detail and light. How, how amazingly beautiful they look. You can see kind of the stitchery on her cloth and she's holding a girdle book. So girdle book showed, you know, Mary was, was very wise. So she read a lot. <laughs> and, um, and so this book was designed where that, that covering, you folded the book up into it and then it had these kind of knots at the end that enabled you to tuck it into your girdle or belt to carry it around with you. Anyway, but look at her lovely face, just how, how beautifully detailed that painting is and that crown with the flowers. Again, there's her white lilies, just beautiful. All right, so next we're gonna look. So on the panels on the left and the right, you have angels. On the left side, you have a choir of angels. On the right side, you have angels playing musical instruments. So we're gonna look at a detail of that kind of lead angel there. And just, oh, again, just look at that amazing craftsmanship, how how incredibly realistic that looks. And again, this is not huge. I mean, it's a pretty big piece of art, but each individual, paint, individual painting is not that big. And here you can see every thread of embroidery on that angel's robe. So that panel on the bottom left there uh, actually is a replica. The actual painting was stolen in 1939 and it was never recovered and to this day there is a detective of the Ghent police force assigned to nothing else but trying to recover that painting because it's such a treasure. Anyway they hired an artist to kind of paint a replica. They, they had some idea of what it looked like because somebody had painted a study of it and he did a pretty good job but sadly it's not the original. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the uh, main panel down there. So the, the whole uh, altarpiece is kind of called the Adoration of the Lamb, and that's what that panel is about. So here's a close view at it. You can see there's the Lamb of God um, kind of on the kind of the Ark of the Covenant. Then you have the Fountain of Life in front of it, some angels around. Uh, and then you have four groups, groups of people. So in the back left, uh, you have the 
uh, martyrs, male martyrs, so people who died for their faith. And in the front left, you have uh, the Jewish prophets in the front row kneeling down, and then you have some uh, famous writers and philosophers and so on behind them. On the right front, you have the 12 apostles, and then behind them are some of the popes and some other Catholic saints. And then the back right are the female martyrs and saints. So this is just a detail of uh, the popes. And I mean, it's just amazing. You can actually, the painting is so finely done that you can actually read the book they're reading. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you a little detail just of the landscape, because I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, but if you look at it, it is so infinitesimally tiny brush strokes in those buildings of the cathedral, just amazing. So I want to show you one more little detail and that's in that landscape on the bottom right panel. Uh, Van Eyck and all these plants that you see in the background, they are all botanically accurately drawn and painted, which is just crazy because this is not even any kind of important part of the painting and most artists would have just winged it, but not Van Eyck. All right, and here it is. So you can see just exactly how incredibly detailed that landscape is. So this is our last slide. I just wanted to show you kind of uh, the, the piece in context and where it is displayed. Yeah, so you have some, some idea of the size. You know, it's a pretty big piece, but if you look at each individual panel, they're not that huge. But uh, so next, you guys get to make your own uh, diptychs and triptychs. Let's make some art. All right, so there are a few ways you can make a diptych or a triptych. So the easiest way to make a diptych, uh, if you want to do a diptych, is to t just take two pieces of paper and you'll put them next to each other side by side and just uh, put a piece of tape on the back of, back of them. I have some kind of like masking tape here. so. I'm going to just go and tape these two pieces together. There we go. So I have the tape on them now. So I'm going to just trim my tape off. So now I have these two hinged pieces that I can fold up like a book and then they display open. So that would be how you would make a diptych. For a triptych, an easy way is just to cut a piece of paper, mark the middle, fold the two sides down. Okay, so then you can have design on the outside here and then those open up and they will stand by themselves for your triptych. The other way, and this is what I'm going to do today, so I'm going to make a little bit of fancier one. So I have two pieces of cardstock here, and I kind of drew a design on the top one that is kind of the, I want something that's a bit more shaped. So I drew my little uh, top on there, and you can make it rounded or straight. Now I'm going to cut both pieces together so that the top and the bottom match. So I'm going to go and cut my top here. And I actually don't want those black lines, so I'm going to trim at the top. So I'm just going to trim those right off. So there I have my basic shape. Okay, so those match. Now I'm going to take the top part off. So I have my back part and then the front. I'm just going to cut into two pieces now. Okay, so now I have my three pieces. So I'm going to have my background piece and then I'm going to flip those open. Over so the tape is on the back and you can see right here I have my panels lined up 
Now again, I'm going to take some tape, stick it over the back of where my seam is going to be, where my panels are going to fold. So there you go. So now I have the tape on the back. Um, I'm going to trim off my extra tape here. And you can use masking tape or scotch tape. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to trim these off. So you don't see the tape when you look at the front of your triptych. Okay, so now I have my three panels. Now you can see these fold over. So I can now do a design on the front and then it opens up and you can do a design in the middle. So those are different ways and then these, because the sides stay open, they'll just stand up. So there you go. That's how to make a diptych or a triptych. What you want to put on them is absolutely up to you. So just think about what might you want to put on the inside and the outside of your diptych or triptych. So I decided to make a tiny little triptych. Here's my outside and then there is my inside. All right, so that is what I decided to make. Can't wait to see what you guys decide to make. Send me pictures at starbranchlibrary at adalib.org. Bye-bye.